Kumo Consolidated Holdings transfer communication assets. National Airports Corporation halts eviction exercise. And Prime Minister questioned on UBS loan. This is National MTV News with Helen Sayer. Good evening and thanks for joining us for Monday's news. A wholesale communications asset transfer has been signed between the Kumo Consolidated Holdings and PNG Dataco Limited. The transfer of the assets from KCH to Dataco concludes a transaction that consolidates the wholesale communication assets. The transfer will involve four asset categories. A formal signing took place today to mark the transfer of wholesale communications assets to PNG Data Co. from Kumul Consolidated Holdings and Telecom Limited. The signing took place at KCHL boardroom and was witnessed by SOE minister and delegates from both SOEs. This transfer of the wholesale assets to Data Co. is important as we strategically position our telecom businesses to confront the new challenges ahead. Firstly, it falls within the, the realms of our reform agenda to make our telecom businesses more efficient and effective and to grow the business. And secondly, to confront the competition, especially the changing landscape. The assets will be fundamental to the delivery of broadband and voice communication services as it will include three internet gateways, domestic satellite network, the land and buildings where the satellite is located, and PPC1 cable network, including leased equipment. Datacore as a state-owned enterprise will be responsible for the provision of these services. For Datacore, we are moving into a digital infrastructure asset company. Uh, and uh, those assets that are going to be coming across, especially the submarine cable from telecom as well as the satellite, uh, are required uh, in a strategic way for national security and also as a critical infrastructure for the, for the country in terms of telecommunication. We can now seriously focus on managing it and making sure that our network is more reliable going forward. According to State-owned Enterprise Minister William Duma, the transfer was said to be made in 2016 but did not eventuate. He further explained that under the SOE reform program endorsed by the Marape government, a major restructuring activity commenced in the telecommunication business. The intention of the government is to uh, fulfill the expectations of our people. They expect better, cheaper and efficient uh, telecommunication services and uh, the Marbury government has finally uh, been able to do that and we have triggered off the uh, privatization process by starting with our telcos and if this uh, proves to be a success, uh, we will also be looking at other SOEs. With the signing of the transfer, Telecom Acting CEO Amos Tepi says Telecom will now concentrate on retail business. Uh, it is rightfully that we need to do that and also uh, data code to provide that uh, service back to us, the ISP and the retail customers as all in the country. So I'm looking forward to get this done today with uh, Paul uh, Koboy and the, in front of the minister and the management team of both uh, companies and the, our shareholder KCH. The total value of the assets transfer amounts to 60 million kina. Podivai National MTV News. Prime Minister James Marape has applauded FM100 NAS founder Talkback during its official launch today. Speaking at the launch, he said public opinion matters and such platforms gives a voice to people to be heard. In reference to the upcoming general national elections, the Prime Minister said the show must go on so as the views of the people. As the election time comes around, there will be a lot of content and confusion. Uh, mediums like uh, media, especially the media proper, uh, in radio, in TV, in newspapers, uh, must articulate factual, actual, correct information so that our people are assisted with making the right choice come time for them to cast vote on the ballot papers. As the government, I give assurance from my front. In the circumstances that we are facing today, uh, in going to the elections, 
uh, using this topic, so uh, I will give assurance to our country. We will do our utmost best to ensure the environment is fair on all political parties, the environment is fair on all contestants, the environment is fair for all voters <coughs> to exercise their Section 50 rights in our constitution to vote for the leaders into office for the Lebanon Parliament. Lebanon Parliament is a very important parliament. Our nation is faced with many, many challenges. The challenge of economy, the challenge of COVID-induced stress on our health sector. Uh, today, as we speak, the next run of uh, the Omrican uh, strand in as far as COVID-19 is concerned, is doing its rounds. But these are challenges that we are living with and our people, in the midst of these challenges, will be going to the polls in, in, uh, in, in June, July, in 2022. As you go to the polls, I just want sanity to prevail and people to rise about personality, uh, rise about uh, illegal practices, rise about uh, corruption that is induced and vote, vote, voting votes, and just exercise uh, uh, Section 50 rights you have in its, in its purest form. Petroleum Minister Karen Gakua has commended Prime Minister James Marape for his leadership despite challenges faced in the last two years. The Petroleum Minister added that predicted revenue for 2020 and 2021 were collected 100%. Going past two challenging economic years, Petroleum Minister Karen Gakua has given credit to Prime Minister James Marape for softly managing all sources of revenue. He mentioned this during the PNG National Party's fundraising dinner over the weekend. That is when we should be down on revenue. That's when we should be actually down on revenue because COVID came after we had already done our budget for 2020. The budget was passed in November 2019. COVID came after we had done our budgets. It hit the economy and ruined our prospects of raising revenue, but we raised the expected and forecasted revenue 100%. The Petroleum Minister reiterated that he is proud of the achievement by the Pangu-led government, and he says it takes a real leader to maintain economic stability and achieve the expected revenue given the economic challenges. A lot of people will try to play down these results, but folks, I want to tell you, it's not easy. It takes real grit, real leadership to be able to maintain stability in a time of a real crisis. As the minister responsible for petroleum, Kua says he is confident that the country will raise the expected revenue under the 2022 budget. We have not sent a country bust. We have not destroyed its credit ratings. We have managed, as well as any normal economy would be managed uh, in times like this. Our credit ratings internationally and domestically, domestically are still very, very high. And that is an achievement. Podivai National MTV News. The National Airport Corporation has announced a stop to all planned evictions for the month of February. NAC Managing Director Rex Kiponge said the halt in eviction is in response to Prime Minister James Marape's directive in Parliament to seize all eviction. However, the halt in eviction is a temporary measure until further notice. The National Airports Corporation has been issuing notices to reclaim aerodrome areas in attempts to expand the Jackson's Airport since October 2021. Some of the land NAC wants to reclaim is occupied by settlers around Arima, ATS and Eight Mile areas. However, in response to a call by the Prime Minister, NAC is now halting all evictions. Is to inform the public that uh, the eviction exercise um, by NAC planned to, to take effect in February 2022 is now put on hold until further notice. The reason being that uh, we have heard from the government and we have considered and um, accommodated their consents, right? So I want to appeal to the settlers 
Um, but within this period, um, you need to look at uh, resettling, um, resettling somewhere. Because NAC as a, as a landlord will still exercise its right to take back the NAC's land within the declared aerodrome that is in the hands of the illegal settlers. The settlers affected in the proposed eviction are those at Erima and Saiwara community. Some have built permanent houses and have lived for over 10 years. After purchasing the land for thousands of kina from customary landowners. In a previous interview, some of the settlers spoke about their concerns. Oh, I'm like, do I have to something? Me plus the penis, I'm going to make him title, I'm going to make him all something where proper so that me plus all sub penis, or settle penis long and me plus spend the money penis. The land in question is gazetted state land. However, it is also claimed by the Dubara Idibana clan of Hohodai. They say have no titles over this land. It's still a customary land. You must understand in this land. And the landowners, the customary landowners are still the, the, the landlord the property is still ours. You plan to come nothing. You plan to come and you need your name, you are safe. Meanwhile, NAC does not have a land title to conduct evictions, but it is relying on the Government Gazette number 71 of 2010, which allows NAC to acquire aerodrome areas. My appeal also to the public, and especially those uh, intending candidates for the 2022 election, not to politicize the eviction that is planned to, by NAC, right? So it must never be politicized. We are doing our job, I'm doing my job, and um, that is for the interest of the business. With the 2022 national elections approaching in April, NAC says it is not subjected to petitions and demands from settlers. But the call by the Prime Minister to halt all evictions was done on the floor of Parliament after concerns were raised by the Mosby Northeast MP, John Cowper. Thekla Jogo, National MTV News. Water tanks and cocoa dryers have been delivered to the affected flood communities in the Talasia area. West New Britain Provincial Administrator Williamson Hosea said this effort is to begin restoring and rebuilding lives of the people in Sihuru, Harango and Bagum. Plans are also underway to relocate the affected communities. The theme was led by the Provincial Administrator, DL Officers, Technical Services and the Provincial Disaster Team. By sea is the only way of getting into the affected communities of Sihuru, Harango and Bagum. The Provincial Administrator says this is the beginning to restore lives. <laughs> But lo mi plan lo administration and mi plan make mo sem today ba mi plan physically kam na give me some plan with. The team brought three 5,000 liters of water tanks and three cocoa dryers. Mr. Williamson urged the affected communities to work with government officers to start rebuilding their lives. Em this la long halim mi plan lo rebuilding this la life where we need to be the destruction even come up lo here na. Life bleed la, we save all this time. Let me go down all the time. That's why me plan must respond, government must respond. Hurry up. According to the Provincial Disaster Director, 23 government officers are stationed at the established forward operating base to assist the communities. Talks are also underway to relocate the affected villages. All right, I'm recovering face. Let me come. I'm now by end of this week. Monday, I'm going Close recovery, now you must have restoration, now resettlement. Resettlement, and all sites identified already. Ground land is used, now you have to finish, 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 you
When I'm on economic crop, you may get all the oil of this stuff and walk along all. The National Disaster Office is here to visit the area and investigate the cause of the disaster and provide a detailed report. Last week, Governor Sassindran Mutuel visited the area with building materials, food rations and medical assistance. Some nails na couple of 25 houses and 19 houses low here to plalo Garanga na Narapla Popla Lo Bagum. Now one can legally kai kaita so you plus share him. Na you plus still ask him lo sample kind ten. Time you go back, the mipla pine him sample ten na try salim cup. Jack Lopower Jr. National M T V News. You're watching National MTV News. We'll have more stories after these short messages. Stay with us. Welcome back. A family that has lived in the Hohola suburb of Port Moresby for more than 30 years were locked out of their home last Saturday by police personnel after they were told that it is as per a court order which the family claims has not been done through appropriate procedures. Having been stranded as a result of the situation, the family is temporarily staying with their neighbours whilst they hope to seek justice. Mike Yaru Bogiam and his family were out of the house on Saturday when they were informed that police had gone to their home and locked the gate. When they went back, the gate was locked as they were told, with some food, clothes and other valuable items inside their house, which they have called home for more than 30 years. We are informed to our neighbours that policemen with the, the, the complainant Andrew Andrew, they came with police vehicle and Andrew Andrew with his one talks and the barco itself. Mr. Bogiam became emotional sharing the encounter with MTV News as his small family stood beside him, thinking of what he and his family will do as the school year begins for his children and pondered upon what the future held for them. And it's really hurting. Originally from Western Province, Mr. Bogia married his wife from Gulf Province many years ago, in which he and his family have been long-time residents of the Hohola suburb and members of Hohola United Church. Mr. Bogia said since 2017, there has been a legal battle between himself and a complainant, Andrew Anjo, and the National Housing Corporation over a property named in documents issued to him by police as Section 2, Allotment 2, Flat A, Hohola in NCD. Although an eviction notice was given to Mr. Bogiam and his family prior to what happened on Saturday, he claims it was done through dubious ways. And despite claims that the eviction was a result of a court order, MTV News has not received a formal court order on the matter, apart from correspondence showing instructions within the police force to carry out the eviction and other legal documents regarding the ongoing case. But because of my lawyer used to get the restraining order not to come and eat, get me out from the house. Because this, this case is before the National Court. It's between Housing Commission and Andrew Andrew himself. But Andrew Andrew is going the other way around. Instead of me taking him to court, he's taking me to court, to district court. But this matter is before the National Court. He is calling on relevant authorities to act on the matter and allow him and his family to have access to their house and other items within it. The NHC has carried out similar evictions on other properties in NCD and elsewhere relating to outstanding rental payments and property title issues. However, there have been concerns by tenants on the condition of the properties regarding their maintenance and upkeep given strict measures undertaken on rental payments. They have to do something like get on to the root cause of these situations who are involved in dealing with this corrupt practice, moving out, like those who are faithful in paying rent to the houses, those who live a long time ago. So they must give like some, some uh, relief to them. 
Dennis Orere, National MTV News. Four cocoa cooperatives from impact areas of the Wafi Golpu project recently underwent a development forum with the Cocoa Board. The forum is a lead up from a memorandum of agreement signed last year between Wafi Golpu and the Cocoa Board to collect data and reports in preparation for development activities. The selected cooperatives are from the Bulolo, Huan Gulf, and Noai districts. The Cocoa Cooperative Development Forum was held last week at the Nari Center outside of Lay. The forum follows an MOA between Wafi Golpu and the Cocoa Board last year to have a dialogue with Cocoa Cooperatives to collect data for development projects. Wafi Golpu Joint Ventures Head of External Affairs David Wissing said data collection is an important part of providing community service to impacted areas. Right, and the way we justify expenditure is by data, information. You be helping how much love farmer, how love farmer, kissing how much the, you know, the cocoa cooperatives who were participants in the forum were from Babuaf, Yanta, Labuta and Salamawa. Apart from data collection, the forum was also an opportunity for the cooperatives to raise issues and give their insight on the development process. And we have registered over 2,600 farmers in 2017. These farmers are still doing their own bits because, I mean, uh, they have big challenges. Payment tree is one big thing. Kakao planning, Mao na pura no bus, no got payment tree. Those that all got payment tree, na only process him, na only kam sarim. How about sim kam lulei? The development forum now gives each partner a clear indication of the work plan for development projects under the partnership. Shalin Eri, National MTV News, Lay. The Queen's Baton is a relay around the world held prior to the beginning of the Commonwealth Games. This year, the Commonwealth Games will be held in Birmingham in the United Kingdom. It is currently on a 294-day journey through Commonwealth nations. The Queen's Baton arrived in PNG last Saturday and travelled to East Civic. A welcome reception is about to begin at the Government House in Port Moresby. And here's Huxley Lovai to give us a brief. Thank you, Helen. We are currently at the Government House in Konidobu for the Governor General's welcome reception for the 2022 Birmingham Commonwealth Games Queen's Baton Relay. The Queen's Baton, of course, arrived in the country on the 29th of January, where it spent the last couple of days in the East Pacific province, traveling to various locations around the province, uh, most significantly visiting the mausoleum of uh, the late Grand Chief Sir Michael Samare. So Michael Samari, of course, is the founding father of PNG and have led us to independence on the 16th of September, 1975. Sir Michael, of course, was also the longest serving parliamentarian in our Commonwealth uh, history among the Commonwealth countries before he retired from politics in 2017. So it was uh, fitting that the, Com that the Queen's Baton visited uh, Sir Michael's uh, mausoleum while it was in the province. PNG, of course, is among 72 countries in the Commonwealth that the Queen's Baton Relay will be making its way through in the lead-up to the Birmingham Games in July this year. This is not the first time that the uh, Queen's Baton will be in the country, PNG having hosted uh, the Baton in five uh, previous occasions in the lead-up to uh, Commonwealth Games around the globe. Uh, thank you. Back to you, Ellen. Thank you, Huxley. And that was reporter Huxley Lavai live from the government's house. And now looking at the NAS fund market reports, the Kina closed unchanged at 0 0.2850 US dollars in the interbank market. At Bank South Pacific, your Kina is buying 0.2775 US dollars, 0 0.3862 Australian dollars. 0.2390 euro and 31.23 Japanese yen. Looking at commodity prices at New York closed, gold is trading lower, coffee and cocoa closed higher, copra closed lower. Crude oil is trading lower, palm oil closed higher and copper closed lower. And on the stock market, the Dow Jones closed lower, the ASX 200 is trading lower and the Ordinaries is trading lower. 
National MTV News will be back with more stories after these short messages. Stay with us. Welcome back to the news. Employees of Jamie Pang and youths which are part of his outreach programs have expressed concern on why he is being detained at Bomana Prison when police said he could not be arrested after his charges were dropped. Reports say that Pang is in detention where he is faced with deportation to Australia. This is in relation to his conviction of being in possession of illegal firearms and ammunition. Staff employed by businessman Jamie Peng and youths that are part of his community programs today expressed concern about the detention of Jamie Peng after he was cleared of his charges. Police confirmed that he could not be rearrested after he paid the fine of 130,000 kina for being in possession of illegal firearms and ammunition and he was acquitted by the Boroko District Court of the charges of methamphetamine. Because PNG did not have a law that classified methamphetamine as a dangerous drug. But Jamie Peng, according to his staff, was arrested and is being detained at Bomana Prison. Jamie has been acquitted of all of his charges and yet the next morning he was arrested. Without no, no search warrant, no charges, and not even his rights read to him whatsoever. He is detained at Bomana Prison, which is a breach of our laws and human rights. Peng has an impressive community engagement and has provided employment for former prisoners as well, where he went to visit as part of his community service. Come outside and me come look at him. Now he's been helping me. Uh, me come work one time. I make a plan to go plus something to me. I give me hours to stop and pay more school people at beginning to me. And look on our needs to me too. Where me nothing on our company or our club, where me can go find this lab. The youths shown here are part of the lion and dragon dance groups, supported by the businessmen. They say they have been helped very much by the Peng family. Just to be strong, hardworking, and determined about what we wanted to achieve. His teachings were about discipline, honor, and respect that promoted public safety for our women and children. He has a big heart for local Papua New Guineans. He never closed his hands to anyone or whosoever that was in need. He was always open and willing to help. Fidelis Sukina, National MTV News. The Nine Mile Way Bridge will start operating later this month. This is to ensure trucks do not transport cargo exceeding the set capacity. An inspection was carried out by the Deputy Prime Minister and newly appointed Transport Minister Sam Bussell and the Transport Secretary Roy Mumu. This is the way bridge at Nine Mile just outside of Leigh City. It is where trucks transporting cargo in and out of Leigh are to be weighed. However, it is not in operation. After recent inspections by the Transport Minister Sam Basil and Secretary Roy Mumu, a date has been set for the way bridge to start operating. We wanted to announce to the truckies of Papua New Guinea, the heavy truck users, and uh, the commuters of the highway up to the highlands. On the 25th of February, we will fire up the two-way stations, inbound and outbound of Ley, as you can see on the left and the right of the freeway. The Way Bridge at Nine Mile was first purchased in 2009. Secretary Mumu said the delay in the operations has been due to regulatory oversights like the changes in the acts that govern this sector. Mr. Mumu said roads are designed to withstand certain weights and the capacities that trucks should be carrying are listed in the road traffic act schedule. They must have a fair idea what the load is. If not, we're going to catch them here, and we're going to make sure that enforce that uh, schedule already in the <coughs> road traffic act schedule. Already by law, there's a penalty for every ton that is over the allowable for each category of trucks. 
This way bridge is set to start operating on the 25th of February and transport companies are being urged to observe the weight limits. Basil said more awareness will be made and drivers and their companies will be given three months before the authority starts imposing penalties. Lucy Kopana, National MTV News, Lay. This weather update is proudly brought to you by MoniPlus. With you always. A look at the weather forecast for tonight and tomorrow in the southern region, partly cloudy with evening showers in Port Moresby, Daru and Kerama. Cloudy with some showers and thunderstorms in Alutau and Popandita. In the Mamasi region, cloudy with evening shower or two in Leh, Midang and Wewak, and some showers, then cloudy weather in Vanimo. In the New Guinea Islands region, partly cloudy with possible showers in Lorengau, KVN, Kokopo, Rabal and Kimbe, and cloudy with possible showers and thunderstorms in Bukha. And in the Highlands region, cloudy with some thundery showers in Mount Hagen, Goroka, Kundiawa, and some showers and thunderstorms and cloudy weather in Mendy and Wabag. The weather update was proudly brought to you by Money Plus. With you always. And that's been the new sport and weather for Monday the 31st of January 2022. On behalf of the MTV News team, have a pleasant evening. Good night.